New Zealand is a country that seemingly has it all. In this series, I'll be taking you along every step of the way as we explore the best this country has to offer via road, rail, trail, bike, bus and boat. I'll be explaining its geology, wildlife and history, reviewing its many attractions and offering tips and advice for your own travels to this enchanting land. This episode sees us part ways with Cass' family as we explore Christchurch, enjoying the beautiful parks and River Avon as well as local arts and museums, all whilst learning the incredible comeback story of a city devastated by earthquakes. Good morning. Today is our first day in Christchurch, but Cass family's last day in New Zealand. So we're going to go into the city centre and try and see as much as we can with them before we say goodbye to them tomorrow. We've parked up in the botanical gardens in Christchurch. Start here to have a bit of a wander around the gardens here. These lovely buildings behind me used to be an engineering college and are now an art centre. However, like most buildings in Christchurch, they were badly damaged during the Canterbury earthquakes nearly a decade ago. But even now, they're still rebuilding a lot of the city and they are, as you can see, repairing these buildings here, which will eventually be uh, more galleries, performance spaces for the art centre. Hopefully, in the next couple of years, they will be finished. Got some lovely uh, falafel wrap. We've got loaded fries. Loaded fries. Oh my god, that's good. Well, so far, uh, I'm really liking the vibe here in Christchurch. It seems really chill, there's a good art scene. At the moment, there's a busker's festival on, so there's loads going on on the streets to see and do. But it is also really odd because there's quite a lot of destruction still from the earthquakes that happened in 2011. As you initially wander Christchurch, you notice cracks in buildings, the cathedral in ruins, and businesses boarded up and left as they were on the day of the earthquake without funding to repair or demolish them. Yet, even on our first day, this clearly contrasted with a strong community rebuilding a modern, vibrant city which Kath and I looked forward to exploring more of over the following days. After six weeks of travelling together, today we are parting ways with Cass' family. They're heading back home via Singapore and we're staying here in New Zealand for a bit longer before going off travelling Asia. We're at Christchurch Airport, ready to say our emotional goodbyes. Are you going to miss us? No. Can I take the postcard please? We're not sending any postcards. They don't have any... They don't have any... And then there were two. <laughs> Just us now. We've been travelling for nearly two months, pretty much non-stop, and now that's the two of us, we just need a couple of days to chill out and slow down. We're gonna go scoot scoot. We're gonna walk or scooter into town. And to be honest, that's one of my favourite things to do when I'm in a new city, is just wander the streets. Uh, go to the shops, really bland, normal things. And I've kind of missed that because we've been doing big, amazing sightseeing every day. I'm looking forward to just chilling out and seeing where the day takes me. After the heat of Australia, we then got used to it being cooler here in New Zealand, but today in Christchurch, it is sweltering. It's in the 30s. 
So we're going to head down to the River Avon and go punting. Hopefully it'll be cooler there. And it's very odd walking around Christchurch because all the street names, the river, everything are very English names like Oxford Street, Regent Street. And the cliche is that Christchurch is the most English town outside of England and it certainly feels that way. Well, that was a really lovely way to spend half an hour, just drifting along the river, seeing some of the native New Zealand birds, and hearing about how they've rejuvenated the area after the earthquakes. You could see when you went under some of the bridges, the steel beams twisted and bent and even cracked in places from the earthquake. And that was a story over most of the city. Nearly 10,000 buildings had to be demolished and many, many more were damaged and that left loads of free space which they've turned into these lovely parks with sculptures and flower gardens that the community really got stuck in and it was great hearing about all that. The guy that was steering our boat, Roy, even got a chance to show off his punting skills when his hat blew off down the river and so Cap had to take his pole while he rode back and saved his hat. Um, but yeah, really lovely experience. Roy also said that it's the hottest day they've had this year in Christchurch and I'm not disputing that fact because it is boiling. We are now heading out for dinner at a place called Riverside Market which as the name suggests is a place next to the river with a farm's market inside it also has loads of shops and loads of great restaurants. It's a relatively new complex, serving organic local food and takes waste seriously, so it has biodegradable packaging and takeaway cups and cutlery and everything. So really positive in that respect. And every time we've gone past here over the past few days, it's had a really great atmosphere, been really busy. And the same right now, it's looking very lively. So I'm gonna try and see what options are available and what we fancy. This afternoon we're heading out to do some museums, uh, Canterbury Museum, which is mostly a free museum with some good permanent exhibitions about Maori culture, um, immigration to New Zealand, native New Zealand wildlife, and even has an old Victorian Christchurch street, as well as some good temporary exhibitions we're looking forward to exploring. This exhibition called Squawkzilla is about the ancient giant birds that used to roam New Zealand. And look at the size of these penguins. They are massive. I cannot believe that they are actual penguins ones. <laughs> This exhibition on the Dunedin 1000 is fantastic. Basically, there was a study that followed 1,000 individuals in Dunedin from the 1970s when they were born, right up until present day, and they're about mid-40s now, and it goes through all their life, uh, the kind of things that were popular during their period, what they got up to in their life, the employment, big things that were happening in that decade, right up until just a couple of months ago when there was climate strikes in New Zealand. It's really fascinating seeing the artefacts and what was happening at those periods of time. The amount of data from such a long-running and wide-ranging report is unimaginable. They've produced over 1,300 papers and reports on all things like mental health, criminology, personality, dental care, health asthma, you know, all kinds of things leading to these reports being some of the most cited in the world. We're now heading to another exhibition by Canterbury Museum called Quake City. And as you'd guess, this is all about the earthquakes in 2010 and 11, how they happened and about the response to them and the years afterwards and how the city's recovered. Well, that was 
such an interesting and well done exhibition on the earthquakes. I think what it leaves you with is a sense of scale of the earthquakes. First of all, the scale of destruction, how much of the city was destroyed. It wasn't just a couple of buildings, 80% of the city was flattened, whether it was roads, bridges, rail, houses, office blocks, everything was affected in some way. And then there's the scale of the response, whether it's the first responders and the search and rescue teams from New Zealand and around the world that came and helped find survivors. And then the community afterwards who helped to rebuild the city, kept people going. There was a student volunteer army and the farmers volunteers all came in and pitched in and helped build it from big projects to little ones like a pedal cinema where they created a cinema which was powered by people on bikes. After being in Christchurch several days, that museum exhibition leaves you completely rethinking the city because all I'm thinking now is how the hell have they completely rebuilt it from what it was? I know it's been nine years, but the work they've done is incredible when you see the amount of damage that was done. It really is awe-inspiring. Whilst the earthquakes still dominate Christchurch, you also get the sense that they've owned it. Not only coming together to rebuild, but rebuild better with well-designed, community-driven public spaces, projects and events that quickly made us feel at home. Whether relaxing in parks, browsing markets or watching performances. And although there is clearly a lot of work still to be done, this only makes me excited to see what more Christchurch can offer in the future.